Okay, it says I'm live, but it also says it's scheduled for another time. So we'll see. Also, my head is cut off, and now it's not. I'm in this beautiful garage setting where I can sit here, and my backdrop is a ladder and stuff. Um, yeah, so let me explain what's happening right now. My goal is to just talk about a few things that have been on my mind, um, and then archive this so it can post on Tuesday morning, so that way there's still something posted, and hopefully I have a couple other things I wanna do this week. But um, I've never gone live on my own channel before, and I've never tried it, and I don't know how to do it, so I'm trying it right now, and honestly, all that it was was that I wanted to clean up this workshop area for the winter, so I normally have 3D printers out here, and I figured like, well, instead of doing that all bored by myself, because if you notice, let me turn this around this way, I'm out in my garage, I guess I could have flipped the camera, but I didn't. There's an empty space over here. <clears throat> what that means is that I am here alone at the moment, because somebody, <coughs> Heather, went to Long Beach, and because she had to work and like do her job and stuff. And so I had nothing else to do tonight. So I figured like, why not go live? And the reason is um, also because I watch and subscribe to James, James Lee's Mukbang channel, just because he's so charming and it's so entertaining, but he goes live like 28 times a day. And uh, man, it's like, it's impressive how active he is on his channel and I was like, well, I should at least try to be somewhat active. And I see that there's somebody who gave a like and a thumbs up. Um, I have, maybe it was James. <laughs> um, let me see if I can find stuff here so I can actually read comments while I clean stuff. And then I actually had a whole point, which is why I decided to, to do this whole thing. I hope there's sound too. Also a big part, look at that. Um, let me turn off the volume here. Also a big part of it was because, um, wait, what was I gonna say? Big part of things about the stuff with the things. Oh yeah, I got a new phone finally for the first time in like forever. Hey, I see somebody, yeah, yeah, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, but you shouldn't be watching. You should be listening to this as you're driving, Heather. Not watching because safety is important. So I'm in the garage because I had nothing else to do since somebody abandoned me tonight. I'm just kidding. Work is important. Um, I needed to do this anyway, so I'm gonna clean this stuff up. Um, what's up, sup, macho jobber? It's nice to see these familiar faces. I've only ever gone live on Heather's channel or for ShareSpark TV, which like, for ShareSpark we always have plans. Even for Heather's stuff, at least like Heather's happy hour has like a plan, a time, somewhat of a format. Um, but I have no idea, I just wanted, I was just kind of like, wanting to do things. Major lag though, you're frozen now, not you, me. Sorry, Heather, I don't know you're driving, maybe that's, a, maybe that's what it is. I'm on strong Wi-Fi, but anyway, um, I'm going smoothly on my thing, so I hope that it's okay. Um, but either way, basically what I wanted to do this morning, I noticed, it's also kind of hot here. <laughs> um, this morning I noticed that my channel is up to 49 subscribers, which um, in terms of YouTube greats is virtually nothing. But in terms of starting a channel from scratch is actually, is actually um, kind of really hard. Like to start from nothing and to get to something is, is kind of crazy. And so I figured, okay, if I'm close to 50, this is sort of a number that in my mind has been important and I sort of wanted to talk about it for a second. So um, I'm gonna talk about that while I kind of like move stuff around here. In the thumbnail I have a power saw. There's really no reason for that. It just was here, so I put it there, but um, safety first. So when you start a channel, you have no nothing. You have nobody on your, you have nobody watching your stuff. And for me, I started by doing, <laughs> for me, I started by doing a 30 day upload challenge. And at that point, it was for me to create something, to, to build and create and make something and, and put it out into the world. And it really didn't matter if anybody saw it or not. <laughs> Um, but as time went on, you kind of feel like, man, I'm working really hard and I'm making all this stuff and then it's getting like no views or no anything. And so at a certain point, does the view count matter or does it not? And 
I believe that you should not be obsessed with your view count or your subscriber count. You should make things that you feel are good and make things that you feel are valuable and then you should share those things. And at some point they'll catch on, maybe, maybe they won't, maybe it will be down the line, maybe it won't be down the line. But that's kind of the fun of it is finding your audience, but you need to be genuine otherwise it's not going to work out. You're not going to be happy down the line. And so that was kind of what I wanted to do. And a big thing for me is that I have not really promoted my YouTube channel at all. Um, most of the, the promotion I've gotten has been from Heather or from most people who watch it are people that I either don't know in real life or people I've only met once or twice in real life. And then there's a few people I know in the real world who sort of stumbled across it. Um, some of whom are students of mine, which is sort of strange. Um, and that's kind of it for right now, because for me, it's sort of this weird thing, and I've seen this with students, and Heather and I have talked about it, where um, people have YouTube channels, or they post content online, and they're really proud of it, and they're really excited about it, but they do not tell people in their real lives. And that's kind of an interesting thing, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I have not like shared my channel with the people in my real life. Some have found it, but most haven't. And I don't know why. I'm not embarrassed by any of it, but I think it's like, I don't want them to think I'm shilling them for like subscribers or views. I would want to share it with them when I actually just want to share it with them. And for me, I think to feel comfortable with that, I would need the channel to be at a certain size where clearly when I share it with them, it's because I want to share it. It's not because I'm trying to pull in like, I need more views and I need you to subscribe and stuff. And that is important to me. Um, so... Yeah, so 50 is kind of getting there. I always had it in my mind that like 100 is kind of the big number and a lot of a lot of people and a lot of things and even in my experience doing YouTube channels for like work and stuff, getting the first 100 is like so hard. Um, after that, things kind of take off and grow on their own, but that first 100 is crazy difficult and that kind of has been in my mind for now. It's been like months and months and I'm at 50 and I want to enjoy that and um, I kind of want to celebrate that because Everybody who has helped me and watched me and subscribed to this so far, it may be a small group, but it's a really strong group and it's a really good group of people that I'm so proud to, to know or to interact with in any way, which is really exciting. And so, I don't know, I kind of just felt like talking about that and sharing that idea and Heather saying traffic is so bad, just tell them all, oh, oh, you're sharing two thoughts with me. Um, <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Yes, that is right. So speaking of building, this is stuff that I'm building right now. Um, so I live in the desert. All my 3D printers and stuff usually stay in the garage, but in the summer it gets so hot up here is where I have all of my beautiful filaments and things. But these suckers can get kind of expensive. These can be like 20 or 30 bucks per roll. I completely shifted uh, points right now, by the way. We're talking about subscribers and now I'm talking about filament. Whatever. Um, I'm explaining why I'm here. Um, <laughs> these get really expensive and in the summertime, they melt and get gross and stuff. And so I have to put them inside. But now that it's winter and now that somebody else also needs office space to do important work, um, they need to come back out in the garage. But the garage area got kind of messy, so there's no room for anything. So that's what I'm cleaning up right now. But it's fun to have 3D printers in the garage. So first thing, while I'm doing this, we should probably 3D print something. Um, man, this is all over the place, but that's kind of fun. I kind of like the part where like I can't edit anything and it is what it is. Um, this was my very first 3D printer. Got it exactly one year ago. It's the Monoprice Maker Select Mini, something like that. Monoprice Mini. Um, it's like a $200 3D printer and it's amazing. If you don't know anything about 3D printing, like I didn't, this is the sucker to go with because it's fantastic. So let me plug it in. And turn it on. Probably turn on power would be good. So it'd probably be fun just to have something printing in the background while we do the things that we're doing here and talking about the things we're talking about. So for me, like, oh man, starting a YouTube channel has been like one of the most fun things I've ever done because I teach digital media for a living and I force teenagers to create things and share it, but like, I wasn't participating in that myself. I was sort of just helping them make their things. And to make my own stuff became really, really exciting. Um, and 
Yeah, so it's fun to share things and try new things. So anyway, 3D printing is something I'm excited about and Macho Jabber was saying I got a lot of tools. Yeah, I really like tools. I really like building stuff. Um, I built this pegboard thing. What I learned, which is sort of my philosophy when it came to YouTube as well, was I have no idea what I'm doing with any of this stuff. But when I need to build something or do something, you just kind of figure it out. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you always sort of learn. So, what am I gonna make with a 3D printer? To do something very quick, oh no. All right, let me show you a couple things here. I have an idea and I don't wanna break this phone. Because also I got a brand new phone finally for the first time in many years and I don't wanna destroy it. Heather keeps saying it keeps freezing, I'll have to watch the replay. That's probably just because of the um, reception since you're on mobile. I'm on Wi-Fi, my thing looks good, hopefully it's good. If it's not for other people, let me know. Let me flip this. So, on the 3D printer, on this 3D printer, um, first thing, you gotta set your temperature. So, the extruder, which is this guy here, where the, the filament comes out, um, you need to set it to something like 205 degrees Celsius. So it ends up, yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Heather. We all, ugh, we all love and miss you very much. There's dog, and there's dog. We're all very much missing you. We have nothing to do, so we're just doing 3D printing in the garage. This is what happens without you. <laughs> Please drive safe. Um, so anyway, this turns up here. That gets to about 400 degrees um, Fahrenheit, and if you touch that, it will burn you and ruin your weekend like it's done to me. So that gets hot to melt the plastic. The next setting here, is for the platform, which this heats up and helps the plastic stick to it. And that's gonna be relatively cool. That's just gonna be stuck at 50. Um, this printer has a tiny micro SD card you can load designs onto. So for now, I'm just gonna print something that's already on here. And basically, if you don't know how a 3D printer works, you've got rolls of filament, which are plastic. They get fed through some kind of some kind of um, hot end where, they, where the plastic melts, gets laid down in a shape, and then raised up and laid down and raised up and laid down, and that layer by layer creates something. Here was a test print from this printer as I was getting it set up again. It's a little like one of those cats. Um, you can kind of see the layers as it goes piece by piece. This wasn't a super high resolution print, but there you go. So. Um, I think some of these things take a really long time. We want to do something relatively short. Let's do an elephant. That was like a couple hours. Uh, let me see what else I got. I want something quick. Oh, Rex. Rex is good. We'll do a Rex. And I'll show you what it is when, when it's done. Okay. So that's going to print. It'll warm up and you'll see it do its thing. Um, what else? We've got all these filaments here. These suckers are kind of crazy. This is this weird, like, translucent, shiny one. Um, this one over here is actually made out of wood, so it's plastic and wood put together, so you can make wooden items and actually stain them and sand them. It's so much fun to figure this stuff out. Let me put this back without dropping it. Wait, 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 I gotta flip it. Yeah. Magic, okay. So, oh, why did I do that? You're gonna miss the best part. Never mind. This is like having a, a friend that can't move and you have to like move them around. So now this is lowering down very slowly. Those plastics are hanging. Oh yeah. Yeah, these are 3D printed. This is 3D printed. Even this knob is 3D printed. You can 3D print parts for your 3D printer, which is kind of cool. So anyway, it's gonna go down here. This should work. And it's gonna lay down the first layer. I'm printing a Rex, which is a dinosaur of some kind. I prefer useful 3D prints, but sometimes it's fun just to print like goofy stuff. You know, like an Aquabats logo. You can also 3D print those things. You can 3D print lots of stuff, so here it goes. Should start seeing plastic laying down. Oh no. Where are you? Uh oh. 
There we go. It's happening. They are fun. If you don't have one, if you don't know anything about it, I still recommend it. There we go. So you can kind of see it's outlining a shape. You can clearly see the dinosaur. Ah. Oi. And I get burned. There we go. Cool. So now it outlined a shape and it's just going to fill that in. And as it fills it in, this is one layer and it'll just keep building it up and doing more and more. We'll keep checking in on it. I may flip it. All right. I just figured if I'm talking about 3D printing, I should have a 3D printer printing. Um, and like I said, these ones are super simple. You can buy pre-built designs, pre-designed designs. You can make your own. It's really easy to get started and there's like a bajillion YouTube tutorials on it. So if you do want to buy one, they're really not that scary. And I suck at math. I made a whole video about how I suck at math, but 3D printing was helpful. So that's kind of a cool thing. Anyway, to clean this stuff up, here's some random 3D prints. I did the lion where you melt his mane because why not? Um, and just some other junk. So, I'm gonna clear this stuff away at the moment. Pro tip, here's my commercial. This is not sponsored by Invisible Glass, but oh my God, this is my favorite stuff. Because it's great on cars, but it's great on anything else. So since this has just been collecting like project dust all winter, going to wipe down my workbench. I'm like obsessive with things being neat and orderly as some of you may know. Um, <laughs> and so I want this to be nice and clean. We don't need this charger plugged in right now. Because what I like is for this to be very clean. I have two of these printers set up here at all times that can just go and there's room to work on projects as well. So that's kind of my main goal for today is to get that happening. Like, basically, whenever I do chores and stuff, if I'm not listening to a podcast or music or whatever, I'm having, like, conversations with invisible people, which makes me sound like a crazy person. And so I kind of thought, hey, why not actually say things where other people could listen? Because that might work. So, anyway, as I was saying, I don't know anything about tool. Well, actually, it's not true. I used to not know anything about tools and building stuff, but when you just kind of throw yourself into it, you learn things, you learn what you need, you learn what you like, and, um, and it's great. It's so much fun to, to sort of, it's exactly like what I do with digital media, where you learn all these different technologies and you want to smash them together for fun. <laughs> um, but. I don't know. It's just really fun. It's really satisfying to be able to make stuff on your own and to figure stuff out and like, you know, you can customize things. I put these little magnets up so I can just stick stuff straight to the wall and I can move them wherever I want them to be on the wall that I built, which is like, I don't know, there's kind of a point of pride there. As somebody who always wanted his own space growing up, like, this is kind of awesome to have a dedicated workspace. So anyway, um, always keep rubbing alcohol to help with 3D prints. This little guy to like help. Usually what I'll do with this actually is clamp things into it after I've 3D printed them and then use a Dremel tool to like fine tune them down. <laughs> is Heather going to pop out in the vid? Macho jobber? Probably not because she's on her way back to Long Beach right now. She has back to back to back to back meetings tomorrow that she has to take care of so she can help, she can start taking over the world or continue to take over the world. And so she's on her way to do that. I was playing the drums for a bit and then I got bored and I was like, you know what? It'd be really fun to like make a video, but it's late, I don't have time to make a video. So I'll just go live. So there we go. This is all nice and clean now. Big fan of compressed air. It's so nice out here in the winter because I can just keep everything out here. It's quiet. It's like separated from the house and bedrooms and nothing melts. In the summertime, everything melts and it's awful. Um, anyway, that can go right there. I really enjoy having this like cutting mat so that way I don't cut 
the top of my workbench because it's really hard to find butcher block, really nice butcher block tables. And Home Depot sells these husky workbenches that are butcher block. Um, they're like 300 bucks, but they're really nice. They're just wood and metal and nothing else. And they'll last forever and it's really thick butcher block. Um, and I, love, I bought like three of them. I use them as desks at the house and stuff because they're great. Um, but I want to keep them nice, so having cutting, cutting pads and things is great. Um, man, 3D printing is so much fun. I even learned through it to buy these glass panels. Sometimes instead of blue tape on here, you want to put glass so it's really, really smooth. But clearly this isn't the same size. So I learned how to get these pieces of glass from Home Depot and then get a glass cutter. And you can actually cut glass in any shape and size that you want and safely you know, break it, which is cool. Like, I never knew how to cut glass. And because of 3D printing, I learned how. Let's check in on the dinosaur. <laughs> Funny story about the word dinosaur. So there we go. You can see the whole thing is there. If you go down, you can kind of see it starting to build up. The printer's just going layer by layer. We're at 7%. We'll use this as our timer for the live stream. So this is a relatively quick print. When it's done, that'll be a good ding of when we should end the live stream. Um, unless something crazy happens before or after. So let's see here. How long does printing take normally? Printing, it totally depends on your model. So let's jump here into some of these guys. These are like, I don't wanna call them reject models. Just sort of like test models, like trinkety things that I printed when I first got my printer. And so here is my first original design. This is from last Thanksgiving. Um, don't judge me. Um, you can do stuff like I was trying to do pieces that fit together and move. Small things like this don't take very long. This dinosaur, you can see the size of it compared to my hand. It's relatively small. This will probably take 20 to 30 minutes. Um, something bigger. I'll show you something bigger. This could be fun because we can change locations. I like this. Um, so we'll go here now. So... Well, last summer, I got this drone, the DJI Mavic. And I wanted something, before I had like an official case for it, I wanted something to take care of it. So, I grabbed my super cool blue 3D printer stuff, film it, and I 3D printed this case for the Mavic, which it fits, it should fit. <laughs> Oh, never mind, it's supposed to go that way. Ha. Which it fits right inside of. And then there's even a lid that goes right on top. And the lid says Mavic Pro. So this took forever. This took like 12 hours or something to print this. Because even though it's simple, this is a lot of layers. I don't know if you can see the layers in the light. Yeah, so this was all 3D printed. This is 3D printed. They fit together. It even has the name put on the side, which is really, really cool. Then eventually I got a regular case, but it's so great. Like, let me show you one of my favorite 3D printer things. I might need a flashlight for this. <laughs> so this is one of the things that convinced me to buy a 3D printer. Flashlight, because it's dark. One of my favorite things to do is to barbecue and Last year, my barbecue broke. Oh. Dogs are going crazy. Last year, my barbecue broke, but... Ah, ah, ah. Boy, technical difficulties. Okay, a wheel broke off of it. This has been melted over the summer, but I was able to 3D print a new wheel for my barbecue. And that meant this is a spooky story. That meant that the barbecue was no longer uneven and the barbecue could cook meats 
evenly again. But that was awesome because there was a problem. I couldn't find a wheel for that barbecue that's the exact size, but I could take the broken one, measure it, super easy to design a cylinder, and then boom, 3D printed it, fixed it, could do everything. Whew, that was a journey. Uh, let's check in on this print. So this is kind of cool because now in here, you can kind of see like a waffle shape happening. And what that's doing is as it's building up, it, um, it's filling, it's kind of building up the structure for the inside. And that's going to help make the, <laughs> that's going to help make the um, structure stronger and without having to fill it as like a solid piece. Cause if you take something like this and you fill it as solid plastic, it's gonna really waste filament and there's no need to do that. So even like these things you can see are just totally hollow. Um, some stuff is just filled like this inside. And yes, I saw someone, I think it was Jim, who I might have an idea who that is, um, mentioned that subscriber count is 49. Yes, I mentioned that earlier at the start that it was at 49 and 49 got me thinking about 50. And then that just started me thinking about like, well, okay, what are you doing with YouTube and where do you want it to go? And that was kind of what started the whole thing. So, um, so that's sort of where we're at. Um, so yeah, 3D printing, you can make, I'll kind of wrap up that portion of this, but 3D printing, you can make anything you want. The most common things to make are like little knickknacks and stuff like this, um, because they're easy and they're fun and they don't really have moving parts. Um, but my favorite use of 3D printing is to make things that are useful, where you can solve a problem, you can save some money, you can fix something that would have been broken otherwise. That's a really cool, useful use, useful use of 3D printing. And that's really hard to do though, because what that involves is a lot of, um, you know, you have to kind of learn how to design your own stuff. There's a website called thingiverse.com where you can go and download pre-built designs of 3D prints or even just browse them if you don't have a 3D printer. And you can kind of see the stuff that you can download and change. There's also websites like um, Tinkercad, which is an online-based um, 3D design and modeling program. And that's awesome because for someone like me who sucks at that stuff, Tinkercad lets you design things really easily. Um, and it's all online based, so you can log in from any computer and do things. <laughs> Griffin says, boom, 50 subscribers. Is that true? Did we hit 50 subscribers on the air live? Let me check. Not that I'm calling anyone a liar, but like, you know. It's the internet, you want to verify your sources. <laughs> oh, look at that, we're at 50. We should celebrate. How do we celebrate 50 subscribers? Um, Let's do spray painting because, oh, this is gonna be a terrible idea, you guys. Okay. And just, Heather, if you're watching or when you watch this, sometimes you say you, that you talk about your ADHD a lot, which is a very real thing to deal with. Um, and then sometimes they'll be like, I have it too. And you're like, no, 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 no. This live, sp live stream should be <laughs> proof of my ADD. So first, I will open up the door, but check this out. Let's grab a box. This is going to be the weirdest, um, like, celebration thing. Um, we'll just grab this box right here. Actually, I'll be... I'll be a responsible adult and I'll lay down a tarp or a cloth of some kind. All right, because this is going to give me a chance to talk about something else that I like. So let's put this down here, put this here, put this there. Okay, um, give me one second. Just to recap, 
<clears throat> we've been on for 29 minutes. I've talked about the goals for my YouTube channel. Um, I've run around my house showing you 3D printed objects. We started with 3D print, we've cleaned my workbench, and now we're spray painting. So um, it's been a varied day, I guess you could say. Anyway, I was just talking about this spray paint today with one of my friends actually on Facebook. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is Montana Gold spray paint. So this is actually professional um, graffiti spray, spray paint. I'm not a graffiti artist, but I use spray paint to do back, backgrounds and like paintings and stuff. Um, and I had friends who are graffiti artists that recommended this. And this stuff is great. It has, no pun intended, but it has two balls inside of it. <laughs> um, to help the paint mix up faster. Um, it also comes in these like crazy great colors. It, basically any color you can think of. I just like these bright like fruity colors. Um, it doesn't have a lot of odor. It doesn't like waft. I mean, I'm doing this here. There's an open door, but like this doesn't get all over everything. And the quality of the paint is really, really good. So I wasn't planning to hit, boy, this feels awkward. I wasn't planning to hit 50 subscribers. I thought my family called Griffin. I don't know who Griffin is, but Griffin has some specific interests. In. No, I am drug free for life, which is how you become this weird. I don't know what Montana Gold else could be, but here it's spray paint, which, um, yeah, we're not gonna do like a giant thing. Let's think of what we should do. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, also this spray paint, it has these little things under the cap that prevent the caps from going off if they're in like a backpack or something. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay. So we got this awesome blue. Hmm. I think the blue should be a good background. This is so stupid. Uh, but it's also kind of fun. I don't know what I'm doing, but we needed to celebrate 50, right? So let's celebrate 50. Here's one of the best things about this paint. Tom is nervous. Here's the thing. I'm nervous all the time. That's what I was gonna spray paint is 50. I'm nervous all the time. Do you guys just get to see this now? You get to see me? But this paint lets you go really close and it doesn't get all drifty and stuff. So if you just go to the hardware store and you buy spray paint to use, a lot of times it'll start dripping and like falling all over everything. But this doesn't do that, which is great. This also lets you blend colors really well. I'm not really gonna blend anything right now. Uh, this will actually be pretty fun. Okay, so we got a blue background. I really like hot pink. And actually, <laughs> even though this paint is very low odor, there is an odor. And I feel bad for saying this, it looks like a really good smelling paint. Sorry, this sound probably isn't that great to hear. Also, I should have mentioned this, you can buy all these specialty tips. You can do like really wide spray streams or really narrow ones. You can do all this really intricate stuff, which is kind of cool. There we go. All right, let's do... Yeah. We should probably have a big old exclamation point, right? 50 is a friggin' big number. I know like on YouTube, Everybody has like 10 bajillion subscribers, but like, I don't know, if you think of giving a speech in front of 15 people, like, that's a lot of people <laughs> to talk in front of. And it's not bragging, it's just sort of thinking like, I don't know. Um, I had wanted to start making videos and sharing them online for a really long time. And I didn't start until the summer of 2017. And if I had started years ago when I originally wanted to, like, 
you would have been, I would have been so much further. And it's really cool that you can start from nothing and then sh slowly but surely people will join you. Macho Java said, there goes my thumbnail. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so there's 50, so we need other stuff happening here. Let's take this green. I love lime green. It's like one of my favorite colors. When I was in high school, I was gonna get my car painted lime green, my 2001 Corolla. And then I decided not to because like, you know, wait. There's only so much cool about driving a lime green 2001 Corolla. There we go. All right, so here, I think I'm just gonna add, like, I'm just gonna put some spots around here. I'm not a graffiti artist also, I just randomly started spray painting stuff right now, so um, you can judge me, but like, yeah, I'm pretty honest about my skills. Normally I do, normally the reason I have these is if I'm painting a picture of some kind, I like to use spray paint on the background so you can blend colors together really well. But anyway, now I need the black one. There we go. There we go. Now this one, this is gonna be a really thick line, and I don't really want a thick line. So, what we should probably, what we should probably do is go grab some tips. Oh, I'm not done yet. We're just getting started with the paint. See, I can be super organized, but then like, then I like miss the important stuff I need. Like, my spray paint tips. Hmm. We'll have to make it work with what we got then, I guess. In the meantime, let's check in on this print. Okay, cool. Let's see, let me flip this around. Boom. Okay, so this guy is getting built up. You can see the infill happening to make him nice and strong. You can see it's actually raising off the platform. We're at about 32%. Now this isn't progress, this is the number of layers completed. So it's completed 32% out of 100 layers. So this isn't necessarily a good indicator of time, it's just an indicator of basic progress. Now, put phone here. Sorry for this crazy thing. Hey, look, shelves. You get interesting views of things. Um, that's what I provide on my YouTube channel. Uh, oh, well. See, my goal here was to get some smaller tips for this black paint so I could do some outlining and shading and stuff, but it's not really gonna happen because I couldn't find those tips. So instead, I will do the best I can with what I got. So here we go. All right, we can always like fix it. Um, let me see. This is very addicting, by the way. Oops, I messed that up. That's cool. We don't have to be perfect, right? Like, it's fine. There we go. 
I mean, you get it. <laughs> it's 50. Yay. There you go. Thumbnail. Wow. Um, I should take this and move it over here. Also, it really smells in here, even though I said it didn't smell before. So, let's open the garage a little bit. Air this business out. Okay. Um, now, back to where we were. Oh, thank you guys for your patience here. Boom. Oh. Now I got this sweet backdrop I can put here. There we go. Art. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let me check in and see what is happening here. Um. <laughs> okay, James said congrats. Thank you, James. The whole reason I'm live right now is because of you if you missed that part and I'm because literally it has become a joke um, between me and Heather that every time our phones get a notification, we're like, it's probably just James. And like literally most of the time, <laughs> it is James going live on his channel. Um, so thanks, James. That's awesome. Because I, I think it's so cool with James that he has a full-time job as a responsible adult person. Um, and then he started... He started a YouTube channel just for fun, but he takes it really seriously and does a really good job at it. And then he and Mark work together on it to create something that's super fun, and I just really love it. Um, Macho Chaver says, not bad, thank you. What are, what are Heather and I planning for Thanksgiving? So, um, this Thanksgiving is going to be spent at my house with my family, and it's actually gonna be Heather gets to meet my parents, because they're gonna come into town. Um, so that's gonna be really exciting. I'm actually, I'm really excited for them to meet her, uh, because they're gonna love her, because who wouldn't? Everybody loves her. Um, but also like, I get to feel proud of like, look, I made a good decision. And I'm pretty excited for that. So that's what we're doing on Thanksgiving. And then on Friday, um, we're gonna go hang out with some of Heather's people in her world and her family and um, because of my schedule I have a very like strict work schedule since I have a regular like teaching job um, Heather's schedule isn't necessarily more flexible but she's able to work from a wider variety of places and so what that means is we tend to be stick more around my area and my neighborhood just because that's what my work schedule kind of requires. And so I want to, as much as we can, try to go into her world because we don't do it enough and it's really fun and everyone in her world is awesome. Plus it's like at the beach and stuff, which is pretty darn fun. So um, that's kind of our plans there. And then actually this weekend we're gonna go camping. I've like never been camping since I was a kid. So that's gonna be exciting. The whole point there was that um, it's a new moon and we get to do like some stargazing and hopefully some like really cool um, long exposure photography and just sort of enjoy like each other's company and nature and probably some annoying dogs and stuff along the way. Speaking of annoying dogs, I open the garage, annoying dogs, uh oh. <laughs> oh never mind. They're just over there. Um, Watch out. Oh, watch out for bears when camping. Yeah. Um, we're going camping up in Joshua Tree. It's usually not bears, but definitely coyotes and definitely also mountain lions and stuff up there. Um, but we're not going to an uninhabited area. We're going to like a, a relatively popular spot, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, but yeah. We do, I mean, it's, it's just one night. It, it's a super quick trip, but I think it'll be really fun. I think it'll be a really good experience, but um, yeah, I kind of grew up in that area, so I'm fairly familiar. Not like I could fight a bobcat or anything, but I'm fairly familiar with um, the area and the animals and stuff, and coyotes are usually pretty timid. It's like the mountain lions that are a little, a little scarier, because uh, they do not care. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, boy, I really appreciate that people actually watched. I kind of assumed nobody would be watching right now. Um, so that's really fun. I really like YouTube. I really like doing stuff on YouTube. It's great. Um, uh, what I was going to do yesterday, I spent all day filming a wedding, helping to film a wedding again. And I kind of like had this interesting experience when I was filming the wedding that that's what I wanted. My next like pre-recorded video is going to be about that. Um, but I was just like totally not in the mood to edit that today. <laughs> so I decided like, man, this seems like a way better experience than having to, to edit something. And like the, the fact you get to engage with people is really, really cool. Um, and there's like, there's no chance for editing. I can make myself look really polished and eloquent when I can edit and do retakes, but good lord, you saw what happened when that's not the case. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll kind of talk about that, because that was sort of interesting. Yesterday, I was helping my friend Laura film a wedding, and she, um, I was just her second shooter, which is like my dream job, because I just have to go film use all the fun cameras and stuff, film things, it's really pretty, and then I give her all the memory cards and then I go home and I don't have to edit anything. She does all the work and I still get a little bit of money for it, so that's great. Um, but the wedding we were at, it was crazy because it started by me going to the house where the groom was getting ready so I could film his getting ready shots. And the time I was there, they were, you know, really great, fun people. Um, but they were a little nervous on wedding day and he was stressing out because they couldn't get the bow tie tied right and everyone was freaking out how do you tie a bow tie and then someone came over with the gift that his fiance had given him because the bride and groom were supposed to exchange gifts and they kept asking me I guess because they thought I was like a an official wedding videographer like when do we do this when do we do this when do we give the gift do I give it now does she give the gift is she here or is there and I was just like dude it's your wedding you do whatever you want to do and that was kind of something that like stuck out at me. And then the rest of the day, I kept seeing them go through these parts of the ceremony where like they didn't get to do, I guess they got to do what they wanted to do, but they didn't get to do it their way. It was kind of like, this is the tradition, this is the process, this is the expectation, this is what you should do. And I don't know, I, I think in the end, they're gonna get a great video and they're gonna get um, these great photos of these memories, but they didn't really, they didn't really get to be present in the moment. And I've seen that, I've only been to or filmed um, maybe like nine or 10 weddings in my life, which isn't really that many. And most of them have kind of had this feel where there's a bride and a groom who plan for months and spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars on their wedding. And then they get there and like they don't even experience the day because they're so wrapped up in what they should do and what's coming next and there's like a wedding coordinator pulling them around and it's it seems kind of crazy to me and and I was thinking it hit me because that was a really good metaphor for just life in general because it's so easy to just get caught up in what you think you should do or what you think is expected of you and others expectations that then you kind of forget what you want to do and it just kind of hit me that like, wow, you know, like you, you hopefully, you know, these guys are only going to have one wedding and it should be however they want to do it. And it doesn't really matter what the tradition is. They should be able to do it their way in a way that's meaningful for them. If that's very traditional, then that's awesome. But if that's non-traditional, then that's cool too. And that kind of goes for your life in general. Like you should be able to carve the life for yourself that you want. And as long as you're not hurting anybody else or, you know, doing anything horrible to the world, then there's no reason you shouldn't be able to do that. And there's no reason not to go for that. And um, I don't know. So that's that's kind of the next pre-recorded video that I make is going to be based around that theme. But that's something that's been that's like been ringing in my head lately is that idea. And that's one of the things that I love about Heather so much is because she gets that really well. And she understands that she really gets that like you only have one life to live and you need to do it your way and that might mean getting some weird looks because it's not conventional or it's a little different but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, at the end of the life, you look back and you only had your one time and if you didn't spend it the way you wanted, man, it's, it's a total waste. You don't get to like reset and do over. So. 
um, that's, I don't know, that's, that's just an important theme to me. I struggle with it a lot because, you know, as like this house that we're in, you know, I don't live in the nicest area. I live in like a, you know, a pretty lower class, like a low socioeconomic city and stuff. But, um, my house is new and nice. And the reason I can afford it is because it's in, you know, not the best area, not the most desirable area. Um, but it was so important for me, you know, growing up in some instability, living in apartments, you know, not having a lot of money growing up. It was really important to go to school, get a good job, um, have some security, some stability, get a house that's my own. You know, I can put stuff on the walls. I can tear things down. I can spray paint in the garage if I want to. I have a garage. Um, you know, I can paint the walls. I can tear stuff out. Whatever I want, I can do it because it's mine. That was something that was really important to me. And that's kind of tough though because the other part of me is like very much a, you know, um, wants to enjoy and explore and experience all the cool things that life has to offer. And oh man, it's so cool to just sort of be like a, um, I don't know what the word would be like, not a gypsy, but something like that, where you're kind of just, you know, you're not really tied to anything. And so I've always struggled with that balance of wanting to have enough stability that I could be free, if that makes sense. And being a teacher is a great way to, to get close to that because you do have some time off. Um, you get a decent income to support that. Um, but the time that you're teaching, you know, if you want to do a good job, that takes, you know, I work minimum of 50 hour work week every week, minimum. And that's, you know, most of the time we have all these other things and other events happening. So it's kind of, it's kind of tough to find that. But at the other, at the other hand, if I like were to quit my job and just move away, then I would very quickly be like, man, I really wish I had my garage. <laughs> I really wish I had my tools and I really wish I could just go on a nice like couch and, and whatever. So it's, Struggling to find a balance to get the life that you want is something that's important to me. And it really jumped out yesterday at this wedding that I that I filmed. Um, man, <laughs> my show keeps going. You got a lot of security. We, we I live in a nice neighborhood. The town that I'm in is is up and coming, so it's you know it's been kind of a lower end town, and now it's sort of like in the process of getting better and better and lots of new stuff is happening, but we're still in that transition phase. So there's, there are great spots and there's a great community and a great history, but um, there's also like, you know, totally want a security system, totally want to live in like a gated community, you know, have some dogs to watch your place kind of situation. Um, and that's, but I don't know, it's, it's so interesting. There's an interview with Steve Jobs. I'm all over the place, but whatever. It doesn't matter because it's the 50th anniversary extravaganza. <laughs> There's a, or not 50th anniversary, 50th subscriber extravaganza. There's an interview with Steve Jobs from 19, like 94. It was after he was fired from Apple. It was when he started working at Next and he was just starting to develop like the next computer and the next operating system. And he was talking, and in this interview, it's this like low res interview, he talks about how um, a lot of people think that life is this container and you have to fit within the container and just try to do your best. And you can realize that you can actually kind of poke life and if you poke it, something will like poke out or poke back at you and you can move it and stuff will move and you can kind of shape it and mold it because everything you know in the world around you was created by other humans and none of those people you know, we're endowed with any knowledge that you don't have or have the ability to have. And so it's okay to look at things and kind of think, well, that doesn't work for me. I want to do it this way. Or what if we did this instead? And I don't know, that's so interesting to me. So anyway, we're kind of going off, but that leads, I'm going to tie this all together in an expert way as we get ready to wrap up this 3d print. Um, so that kind of leads back to the whole point of why I wanted to start a YouTube channel in the first place. Perfect circle thing happening right now. The reason I wanted to start a channel was because I wanted to create stuff and share things. And the reason I wanted to create and share things was because that is a core value of mine and I was not doing it enough, not nearly enough. 
And so I'm gonna start a channel. And the reason I started a channel called The Enthusiasm Project was because about six years ago I had an idea to start a website where I profiled people who, people I know and people I've encountered who are doing exactly what I talked about. They're living their life on their terms and doing creative, interesting, um, rewarding things that they're passionate about. And what that means is if today were to be the last day of their lives, that would be tragic, but they would definitely feel satisfied and proud, or at least on their way to feeling satisfied and proud. And that's, and I wanted to share that so that other people could hear those stories, see those stories, and also have that feeling, or at least that push to create or do or experience the things that, that they want to because you only have so much time. Um, and so that was kind of where it came from, but that sat on the shelf for like six years, that idea, and then finally last summer was when I decided to go start with it. <clears throat> and I wanted to make these profiles of people to do the same thing that I originally planned, but I realized if I waited and waited until I had these profiles finished, it would take a long time, and I might only be able to do like one a month. That's not nearly enough content, so that's when I realized I would have to step up and create my own stuff and kind of like be the example of being excited about things. I mean like 3D printing, painting, YouTube, like you know, house repair, dogs, like all these things. It's so fun to have interests and excitement in life and to kind of like pursue those. And I want to share that enthusiasm and that passion with other people. And that's my ultimate goal. I guess, and I still haven't done any of like the official profiles that I set out to do, even though I have like 12 people lined up that I need to. Um, I, just, I just need to have the time. So hopefully my goal is to have one or two wrapped up before the end of 2017, so that way I can share those. But I'm super excited because if I had started with those profiles, they would have been so dry and sterile, but now that I've created like 45 of my own videos and kind of developed my own video style, now those are gonna have a different life and personality that they wouldn't have before. All right, Whew. back to comments. <laughs> Macho, it looks like it's you and me for the most part, um, which is great. Uh, let's see. So first you're saying, don't worry, your channel will grow and more people will come. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. It's not about, it's not about the numbers. I would make stuff, you know, as a kid I made stuff that nobody could see because the internet wasn't around. Um, it's more about making stuff, but I do want to share it. And there is kind of a point where it's like, 50 is a great number because I feel like if I make something and 50 people can see it, that's worth it. And hopefully a few of those people are you know, impacted or entertained or informed or whatever by it. Um, and then the more the better. So I feel like I'm kind of already there where I can stop worrying about that and just focus on making what I want to make. Um, but that's not the goal. I want to make something valuable. I, I'd much rather have fewer people gaining more value than more people not getting any value. Um, even if the value is just being entertained or whatever, making fun of my dumb face, that's fine. Um, and then, uh, do I make money with Uber as a driver? No, I don't have any side, my side jobs are mostly um, related to digital media. Because um, my teaching job is like, Last week I worked 75 hours. Like I did not have time to, to do side jobs. Plus I wanna you know, make my own stuff. Plus I wanna spend time with people I care about. And plus I wanna like, you know, relax and play Nintendo sometimes. <laughs> um, so if I do side jobs, they're usually digital media related and they, um, it might be photos, it might be design work, it might be doing weddings or whatever. Um, but that's mostly for fun. That's stuff that I might even do for free, but I just happen to get paid for it. I've never done Uber or any of the service things like Postmates, which, um, you know, Heather has a whole series of videos on that. Um, that's just, I, I don't know, I'm just, I never have, I don't really have the time. Yeah, 75 hour week, so that was my normal 50 hour week, plus we did a field trip to Universal Studios, uh, which is like a 15 hour day, plus we spent 15 hours, 50, I don't know, plus we spent like 15 hours um, filming with our school district superintendent on this TV show he's working on so it was just like that was all on like Saturdays and Sundays and there's nighttime stuff plus then Heather and I do ShareSpark TV on Tuesdays and Thursdays 
um, which is really fun. Like that's totally not work. Uh, but we do work to plan it out and make it good and make it about something. Um, plus, then there's like, I try to go to the gym two or three times a week. Plus, we've got dogs to take care of. Um, I don't know. It's all fun stuff, though, which is exciting. So it's exhausting, but it's really fun. And that's like, I don't know. That's kind of my keys to success have always been um, work hard, be kind, have fun. Because... And that's kind of what my whole channel was based on. Like, I think that's a tagline that I wrote somewhere in it is work hard, be kind, have fun. Because if you work really, really hard and you're kind, you're kind of a force to be reckoned with. Like who's gonna argue with someone that's a hard worker and really nice? But if you work hard and you're kind, you can also find yourself getting taken advantage of and feeling a little bit like resentful sometimes. So that's why having fun is really important because if you're able to have fun, that means whatever you're doing, you're at least doing it in some way that is, uh, you know, worth it to you. Like you're not being taken advantage of, you're still enjoying yourself. So if you do those three things, work hard, be kind, have fun, like you, there's kind of no stopping you. And then you're also gonna enjoy all the things that you're doing. Okay. <sighs> That was so much talking. Um, but this has been so much fun. Like, it's been such a blast to just kind of have like a random live stream that I didn't expect. Um, I'm trying to like, wait, this is at 67% right now. So let's check in with the dinosaur. Uh, uh. Okay, sorry, I keep forgetting like what camera I'm on. So here it's getting a lot bigger. That's what she said. Um, you can see the infill. He's got spikes on his back now. We're down to 68%. And you can see all the temperatures. And this is the speed. I didn't mention when you're 3D printing, <clears throat> the faster it prints, the lower quality the print will be. The slower it prints, the higher quality the print will be. Um, and same thing with layers. Maybe. Yeah, you can see the layers happening here. This is relatively low resolution. When you design your prints, if you make them high resolution, there'll be more layers and they'll look really good. These guys here are much higher resolution. You can still see the layers, but it's much harder. They look more like regular plastic. Um, yeah, and then that just takes a lot longer because it's doing more and more layers. Um, so there's that. I'll show you. I feel that it's really important to finish this since we started it. So we got 30% left to go. It'll go pretty quick. Um, we already did this beautiful artwork here. Um, I'm gonna show you one of the other printers that I have. That's one of my favorite printers. So, so if you wanna see something that's kind of cool, uh, this would be my room where I kind of like work on all my stuff. I use it in a lot of my videos. It's where all like my drums and stuff are. Um, it's kind of like my office. And I made a video <clears throat> about the fact that I had this other room that I was like not really utilizing well. And I wanted to turn it into like a production space and I didn't know what to do with it. Um, and now I'm actually pretty excited because it, it neighbors my room and now it's somebody's office to work on their stuff. So it's kind of cool that now somebody who is um, very important and special to me gets to work and be based right on the other side of the wall for my stuff. I really like that. Um, and now she just sent a bunch of hearts. <laughs> um, okay. I hope that's not all obnoxious, but like it's so fun to, to be in your 30s and feel like you're in high school. Um, you feel like you're in high school again. Uh, but like actually be an adult. So let's talk about other 3D printers real quick. Here's another one, like the one I have in the garage. I just got this because I wanted to print more stuff faster. Then there's this guy, which has been displaced at the moment. Um, this is the Prusa i3 Mark II by Joseph Prusa, who is like 26 years old, designed this company out of the Czech Republic that makes these printers, and this thing can print like basically oh this printer is 3d printed so there's metal parts obviously that aren't in electronics but anything that's orange and any of the black plastic is actually 3d printed um 
and it's so even the buttons and the clickers and stuff are all 3d printed even up here i 3d printed this which is which if you have a spool of filament is actually made to hold your filament and then it feeds down through here but it can be adjusted to different sizes of filament and there's bearings in here that make these fall off um <clears throat> so these are the kind of things that you can design with 3d printing stuff i because i'm not the best designer i tend to design things like the crossy road chicken uh that's my skill level right there basically but this printer here is one of the test prints i printed on it it's a vase i don't know if you can see the resolution but this like in terms of layers you can't even see them it's just like, this is like, I mean, this is just a little vase. You could put water and like a flower or something in it um, or pens or whatever. But this does not feel like a 3D printed object. This feels just like an object. It's crazy that you can have stuff like that just in your home. <laughs> it blows my mind. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And jumping over here, there's another 3D printed thing that I'm kind of proud of which would be this little pen holder. This took like, I think maybe like 20 hours or whatever. Um, this, okay, I, this looks like a vape pen or something. This is actually a case for an Apple pencil. <laughs> so don't judge me. Um, yeah, there's, I don't know, this is like a really cool pen holder that you can just make for free. You know, guitar pick holders. There's all this cool little stuff that you can just create and 3D print. And it's, man, it's so much fun. Um, it's like literally math and engineering in action, which, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, who cares about any of that stuff? And then it's there and you have it and that's really exciting and you can use it in the real world. So I don't know. It's fun. Let's check out the dinosaur. He's getting there. We're at 75% right now. Okay. <clears throat> now, I originally talked about wanting to clean things up. Now I've made several messes. If I've learned anything from like the kids shows that I watched as a kid and as a teenager, you should always clean up your messes when you're done. So let's do that real quick. You can just come with me on this journey. Um, boom, first thing. My little art project over here. Should definitely put these things, and if you missed what I said earlier, these spray paint cans are interesting because they have, um, the tips all pop off really easily. And then you put these little rings on them and then it won't spray, which is nice. They don't have lids because lids take time to take off. So if you have this, you know, in a bag with lots of things, it won't spray or take too much time. I'm not condoning graffiti as like vandalism, but I do love graffiti as artwork. And I've known some really talented graffiti artists. And you know, when it's just someone taking a can of spray paint and ruining someone's property, that sucks. And I don't like that. But when it's someone taking spray paint and creating something beautiful that like you really can't believe was created by a person in a can of spray paint, I think that's awesome. And I'm a big fan of that kind of artwork. Now I've got my drop cloth. See, I need like a cleanup song. I don't know what kids show it was that had that, but I should grab one. All right, I should make one. That is. Ooh, now it's a race against the clock because phone has low battery, which is actually the first time I've seen the low battery warning on this phone because I got the big fat iPhone. Not the 10, but the 8 plus. Ugh. And the battery on this thing is nuts. It lasts forever, which is great. <laughs> um, okay, so first, let me see here. <clears throat> Heather said, heart, 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 heart. I will respond to that by saying, um, let's see. I will respond to heart, 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 heart by saying, Couple with a heart, uh, kissy heart, bicep, 
or bicep. And uh, I need something better. Emojis are relatively new to me. So, oh, oh, a tent, because we're gonna go camping and it's gonna be in tents. Never mind. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. I understand if everybody unsubscribes after that. Um, anyway, now I lost my live chat window. Row, row. That ain't fun. Oh, we'll just get rid of that. Oh no. Let's refresh. We'll just come back. See, I preached digital literacy, but um, sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, so jumping in, Macho, you said Tom print money. Can't do that, but what I have done is thought about, I like to do direct deposit, like if you get a check, use your phone to do um, like a, whatever, a deposit, electronic deposit without going to the bank. There have been several times where I've had money and I'm like, I need to put this in the bank. Maybe I can just take a picture of it and deposit it. Um, no, it doesn't work that way. Uh, so there we go. Am I getting the iPhone 10? All right, we're at 82%. Let's talk about the iPhone 10 for a second. <laughs> so here's the thing with the iPhone 10. I was really excited about it when they announced it. Um, but I've been burned by Apple several times when they create new, when they come out with new technology and it's like too new. Cause sometimes they have production issues. Sometimes they have quality control issues. They usually have availability issues. I didn't want to deal with any of that. I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars to be a beta tester on a product. And I'm not saying that's what the iPhone 10 is. I think overall it's pretty fantastic and it's definitely showing like a cool direction of where things are going. But like I keep my phones usually for three or four years and or two to four years and I want to make sure that what I have is reliable. Um, and the eight plus it has all the internals of the iPhone 10 has almost the exact same camera. Um, it has a bigger usable screen. So the iPhone 10 has a bigger screen overall, but it's longer and narrower, which personally I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer the iPhone 8 Plus, which is a wider screen because then you have more usable space. It's not just about the square inches. It's not just about the inches, it's about how you use them. Anyway, um, clearly <laughs> I'm running out of things to talk about. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know, I, I didn't go for the 10. I was in Best Buy today and I played with the 10 for like a minute and I was like, it feels really cool, it looks really cool. Um, it's definitely a fantastic phone. I'm not like ragging on it by any means, but it just totally wasn't for me. I really like the 8 Plus. I was scared of the giant phone because I thought it'd be too big. I don't notice that at all. It's so nice, the battery lasts forever. It's what, eight o'clock at night. I've been using my phone all day and now it just hit 20%. I've been live streaming for 75 minutes. Like. I mean, that's a huge battery drain. Plus I've been streaming music all day. Plus I've been listening to podcasts all day. Um, man, it's a great phone. And the photos you can take on this thing are unbelievable. I love it. I'm gonna print the iPhone 10. I think that's the best idea. Um, but actually you can print phone cases and stuff. So that is a real thing that you could do. All right, oh boy, dinosaur. We're at 86%. He's rapidly approaching his end here. Let me think. What else do we need to talk about before we wrap up for the day? Um, 50 subscribers. I think that's pretty exciting. I think it's exciting because it's fun to start something from nothing and have it turn into anything. And I'm super appreciative of this and I'm super appreciative to everybody who's been supportive and you know, people like Macho Jobber who, sh who show up and support live streams and participate and people like James who um, you know, aren't afraid to create their own stuff and to share it and to support other people and, uh, you know, just people who participate. It's really great and I love it and I appreciate that and I, of course, appreciate Heather who, like, now I'm openly gushing about Heather and how much I appreciate her <laughs> and, um, but wow, she was really the one from, like, the, the first day we met after we had a 10-hour conversation about digital literacy I was, and her next question was, why aren't you making your own stuff? And I was like, well, I make a few videos here and there, like nothing too crazy. And she was like, start a vlog, make videos. That's my answer to everything in life. Start a vlog, start a vlog, start a vlog. 
And then I was sending her all these emails like, well, if I wanted to make videos, you know, should I do it this way or should I do it this way? And they were like these long paragraphs asking like how I should start a channel. And she was like, dude, just make it, make it, just make something, just make it, don't overthink it, just make it. <clears throat> and then finally, I had sent her a really long email about, you know, what should I do, getting feedback on ideas. And before she could respond, that was when I decided to just make my first, like, first of the 30, 30 day videos. And I don't know, that, that was the best thing to do to just get started with something is to just do it. And she was 100% right. <laughs> and like, um, man, and then she became like my biggest supporter and encourager. And then, God, I, I am so stupid that I spent months thinking that like, oh, there's nothing there. She's just, you know, whatever, it's fine. Cause she's like, I'm an idiot. Um, I guess I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the, like, well, I mean, it's like most guys, I think we don't have the ability to like understand when girls are like giving us any kind of signals that they actually might like us. So for all girls, I'm sorry. Um, just be patient with the, the guys that you like. Um, but yeah, Heather is proud and I'm so proud of her. And that's the best part is like, it's so, so great. I spent so much time before we were even like romantically involved. I spent so much time telling people how great it was to have a creative partner and a partner in anything that wasn't, that I wasn't pulling the, their slack. They were like bringing it. I had to keep up with her. I've never experienced that before where like, I was trying to do something and the other person was bringing more to the table and I had to up my game to keep up with them. And that was awesome. Because then by doing that, she obviously wanted to up her game and it just helps both of us be better and better and better. And I've never had a relationship like that, either platonic or romantic. And man, it's so great. So Heather, I don't know where you're driving right now. Hopefully you're close to home, but just please know how proud I am of you and how much I appreciate you and how grateful I am for everything. So that's like, that's a pretty fun way to end this live stream. Not that I'm ending it because I can't end it here without finishing what we started. So let's finish that. Ah, phone. Okay. Boom. Okay. We are close. We're at 94%. Dinosaur is getting bigger. The infill now, it's starting to do what's called bridging. I think it's called bridging. Where it's starting to go over the, the little like waffle infill pieces. And now it's gonna create several layers that give him a nice like outer shell that make it look normal. But you can see basically this filament, I just had white preloaded, goes up in here. This extruder motor just turns and pulls it. This 3D printer has a tube it's called a Bowden tube. It goes down, and then the filament goes into here. This metal part, ouch. <laughs> this metal part <laughs> um, is, is where the, uh, all the heat takes place. And so down here is where it melts the plastic. And what this fan does is it cools the plastic right away. So the plastic comes out melted, the fan cools it, the plastic hardens, and then it can have another layer put right on top of it. So it's kind of a cool thing. We're at 95%. Dun, 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 dun. We're getting there. It's so close to being finished. Yay. Um, yeah. Oh, here's an example. This was a knob I printed. This is out of the wood filament. So it kind of, you can't feel it, but it feels just like wood. Um, this is unfinished, but you could stain this. I've even burned it a few times. I built like a, or I printed like a tiki man and then burned him and stained him so it looked like an old bamboo carved tiki statue. That was kind of a fun thing to do. Um, yes, yeah, so you got that happening there. And printers, oh man, they're fun. So this one here, Monoprice Maker Select Mini Plus. I don't know, just go to monoprice.com and search for their printers because it's one of the best rated ones and it's only, usually it's under $200. Black Friday is coming up, so it'll be probably on sale. You can get it for like 180, 150, something like that. Look at this guy, he's excited for um, subscribers and stuff. All right, we're down to the wire, 97%. It's happening. All these cool shots. 
<laughs> this is the problem with not being able to edit is like it's all just one shot. 97 97 50 97 I'm completely losing my mind right now. It's fantastic. There we go. I should mention that 3D printers are totally therapeutic to watch and to listen to. 98. Oh, here's a bug. This is my 51st subscriber. 98. There it goes, layer by layer, which is crazy because this thing didn't exist when I started this live stream. And now it does, and that blows my mind that you can just create stuff like that. Oops. <laughs> Start 98. We're gonna get close. These last layers tend to be a little slower because it's, it's like the finishing touches. And we're at 99. Dun, 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 dun. This is good. The temperature held solid the whole time. You can have problems if those things go nuts. This printer's a year old, it's still working like a champ, so I like that. And the tape is just on here to help um, stuff stick to the surface and then also pull off the surface more easily. There we go. Man, how exciting. I just don't want you, there we go. Dun, 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 dun. And then it's gonna proudly display what we've got. There we go. Elapsed time, one hour, eight minutes. Then you can just keep printing more. So here we go. And he'll just gently pop off. There we go. That is not a bad 3D print. He's got some tape stuck to his side over there. But we've got really clear defined features. His teeth are pretty good. That's not bad for a printer that has been kind of sitting around for a few, a few months, not really getting used too much. He's got his ridges. Oh no. Boom. There we go. So, ah, we did it, you guys. 82 minutes. That is not bad. Let me just, there we go. Boom, boom. So, <clears throat> Oh my gosh, we did a lot of good work today. We got up to 50 subscribers. We got this guy happening, which like you can't, he needs to be there to be able to be visible. So there we go. Um, I really, really, really do want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for help and support. Um, I want to thank everybody just for allowing us to live in a world where people can create and share ideas with others. Because I think that that's so much fun and so incredible and I really appreciate it and truly, um, I don't know, I'm so excited and I'm so happy and yeah, it's, been, it's a great Sunday. It's a great way to end the weekend and go into the work week. So there we go. If we talk about what we talked about earlier, three keys to success, work hard, be kind, have fun, 50, yay. Have a great night and a great weekend, you guys.